Travis Knight, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Fantastic. Now, Bumblebee, obviously a massive film. I enjoyed it a lot, so thank you, in oh, a way. Thank you. Um, but um, your first live action directorial debut, and I'm part of a massive franchise, was that intimidating to you at all? Yes. <laughs> I think you'd be foolish not to be intimidated by something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is kind of big, high-stakes filmmaking. It's a, it's a beloved franchise. It's a franchise that's been enormously successful and been shepherded by one man, Michael Bay, over the yeah. last 10 years. And so, you know, stepping into a role like this, it was, yeah, it was, it was intimidating. I mean, it was exciting uh, because it was something that I'd never done before. And it was terrifying because it was something I'd never done before. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there was, you know, as I started to kind of get into it and, and, and think about the characters, and, you know, I've known these characters since I was a kid. I fell in love with the Transformers in the mid-'80s. Um, so w to, to try to tell a story that really resonated with me, that we, you could really kind of crawl inside one of these characters, really get to know them, uh, I was excited for the opportunity to tell the story and have all the cool action sequences, but really get to the heart, the core of who one of these characters is. One of the things that I found most interesting about the film, but kind of afterwards, was how you essentially make people care about a piece of machinery in like a, in the most like basic way, I guess. Is that itself a challenge? How, as a filmmaker, do you come about doing that? It is a challenge. Uh, you want people to invest their emotions in something yeah. that does not even exist. It's yeah. generated a computer. It's ones and zeros. Um, but that's something I've, I've essentially done my entire professional life. I've been an animator for 20 years. And one of the, one of the main job of an animator is to imbue life into something that doesn't have any, to try to give character and personality, you know, personality and, and little idiosyncrasies to uh, something that is inert. and. Uh, that's always tricky. I mean, when you can, when you, when you have a puppet or a CG model or you're drawing, you know, on on paper to make the audience feel something, to make them connect with something that doesn't exist, you know, when that works, it's it's a joyous thing for an animator and it's it's really magical on some level. So it's something that's always a challenge, but it's also something I've been doing for for decades now. Yeah, and you've got a fantastic cast as well, obviously led by Thank Haley you. and John Cena. Yeah. What was it like to work with them? They were great. I mean, it's, you know, th there's the old saw that, you know, directing is 90% uh, is casting. And I think in this case, that was absolutely true. You get the right person in the right role, and that solves a lot of the issues. Uh, you know, for the lead of this movie, uh, Charlie, um, played by Haley Steinfeld, I needed someone who could really shoulder the burden of the entire movie and, and, and to, you know, emotionally engage into something that wasn't there. You know, she, her, many of her scenes and, and the most important scenes are her interacting with Bumblebee. And Bumblebee wasn't added until the movie until, you know, months yeah. and months later by uh, an army of visual effects artists. So she essentially had to give this beautiful, authentic, emotional performance to something that wasn't there. Uh, there are very few actors who can carry the burden of a movie on their shoulders and do that at the same time. Uh, but when I met with the, the producers in the studio, Haley Steinfeld was the only actor I mentioned. She was my Charlie even before we began. Yeah. And uh, blessedly, she said yes. And I think she gives an extraordinary performance. And for John, um, I think you know a lot of people, m myself included, know John as a, as a very gifted comedic actor. But he, um, but we wanted something different for him in this role. I mean, he plays the, the human antagonist, so he needed to be formidable. He needed to be the heavy. Uh, he needed to be intimidating. But he also needed to have layers of, of charm and, and humor and, and, and empathy, you know, where appropriate. And I didn't want him to be a two-dimensional mustachio twirling baddie. And, you know, John has such a natural charisma and charm that uh, I, 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 felt, I, think, I think that it's easy for the audience to see this villain, if you will, as someone who has dimension. And, uh, and you understand where he's coming from, which on some level makes a villain even that much more terrifying. Yeah, my final question then. The film is steeped in 80s nostalgia with a fantastic soundtrack as well. So what is your favorite 80s song? My favorite 80s song? Well, I put a bunch of them in the movie, yeah. uh, of course. Uh, you know, music is one of those things that really just kind of takes you back to a time and place. It can evoke so much emotion. And uh, for me, Oh God, it's hard to choose one song. There is no kind of distillation of the 80s yeah. in one song, but probably my favorite song in this, uh, in this film is, is Big Mouth Strikes Again by The Smiths. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that song. It's the first song that we hear in the movie. Brilliant. Well, Travis Knight, thank you very much. Thank you.